skin when the fight I'm slowly drifting about the wall And just when I ran out of road I met a man I didn't know And he told me that I was not alone He picked me up, turned me around Cause you healed my heart and changed my name Forever free, I'm not the same I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, I thank God I cannot deny what I've seen I've got no choice but to believe my doubts are burning like ashes in the wind And so long to my old friends Burden and bitterness You can just keep it moving You ain't welcome here and From now till I walk the streets of gold I sing it how you saved my soul This wayward son has found his way You heal my heart and change my name forever free. I'm not the same. I thank the master, I thank the savior, I thank Amen. Well, Happy New Year and welcome to Vision Church. We're so happy you're joining us today. Uh, it's going to be a very interesting uh, Sunday. It's going to be very different from anything we've really ever done before. But we really want to just set this time aside. The first day of the year, there's no better time to do it than to be intentional in prayer and worship uh, of thanking God, of expectancy, of surrender. And so that's what we're going to do. And so um, kind of if you want to stand up and worship, you want to sit down and pray, however you want to do it, you're free to pray at any time. Uh, we will be taking communion later towards the end of the service, so I'm going to ask that you start preparing your heart for that as well. If there's any bitterness or any unforgiveness that you're dealing with, try to let that stuff go before you partake of communion later on. Um, but we're, we're going to start off with this, and we want to have a prayer of thankfulness. And so what I'm going to encourage you to do is, I, if you want to go ahead and have a seat for just a moment, I, I'm going to open the prayer, and I'm going to pray a little bit, and then I'm going to stop praying, but we're going to have a little time after that, a little space after that, that I encourage you just, just to be in prayer and thanking God for all he's done in 2022, 
thanking God that he is going to be with us. We trust the promises of scripture that he is going to be with us in 2023. Uh, we have uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says, thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And, and so that's what we want to do. We want to enter with thank thankfulness. That's why we started with, I thank God. And then we're going to lead into another song of gratitude. And so just take this time and just seek God. I know that you're, you've been busy. I know that through Christmas and New Year's, you've just been running around. So we wanted to create this space today and say, hey, you don't have anything else going on. You're here. So be intentional, seek God, and, and spend specifically and intentionally right now just to be thanking God for what he's done, even if it's been a rough year, that God's been with you through it all. So I'll open us in prayer, and then you continue praying after that. So Father, we give you thanks today. We come with thanksgiving and gratitude. God, that we are so thankful that you don't leave us. And even when it's dark, even when times are hard, even when we are deep in the valley and it seems like there is no end, that you are there with us. So God, we thank you for the victories last year in 2022. We thank you for being with us and delivering us, God. We thank you that even in the hardest times of loss, that your presence was with us. And not only were you with us, but you worked through this church. You worked through us as individuals, that you were refining us, that you were sanctifying us, that you were teaching us and leading us and working in us, that you were growing us to be what you want us to be. We thank you, God, that you will continue to do this in this next year. So, God, we just come with thankfulness right now. We pour out our hearts in thankfulness that you are God and we are your children and you love us so much that you would send Jesus for us. That you would extend grace to us, that you would extend mercy to us, that you would extend your love to us when we are so undeserving. God, we thank you. We thank you, and we're going to spend the next few moments just thanking you on our own. So God, we welcome your presence into this place. Just pour through this place as we continue to thank you. Pray this in Jesus' name. You may continue praying. Welcome to continue praying, or if you want to stand and worship, it's, it's up to you. Oh, my words fall short. I've got nothing new. How could I express all my credit? I could sing these songs 
as I often do that every song must end but you never do so I throw up my hands and praise you again and again cause all that I have is a hallelujah It's not much, I'm nothing else for a king Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah I've got one response I've got just one My arms stretch wide I will worship you So, so I throw up my hands, my hands Praise you again and again Cause all that I have is a hallelujah Hallelujah And I know it's not much you get shy on me lift up your song cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs get up and praise the Lord oh come on my soul oh don't you get shy on me lift up your song cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs get up and Oh, don't you be shy on me, lift up your soul. you got a lion inside of those clothes. Get up and praise the Lord.
The next uh, prayer that we would like to enter into is a prayer of surrender. And so we've thanked God for who he is, what he's done. Uh, but now we want to come to him and we want to surrender everything to him. In uh, Mark 8, 34 and 35, it says, And calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. This is our heart. This is our prayer. And I don't know where you're at. I don't know if surrender is easy for you, if it's hard for you. I don't honestly think for any human surrender is easy. But here on the first day of this new year, we're going to pray. And then as we did last time, I'll pray and then we'll continue praying for a little bit. Then we'll worship some more. But we're just going to pray a prayer of surrender. And whatever that looks like to you, uh, we, we want to surrender our plans to God. Maybe you've got your whole next year planned out. There's nothing wrong with making plans, but make sure those plans are surrendered to God. And if his plans are different than your plans, you trust him. We want to surrender our time. Time is one of the most valuable things we have in this life. So what a great, what a great offering and a treasure to give to God is our time. Probably one of the hardest ones of all, we want to surrender our desires. The things we've been wanting, the things we've been praying for, the things we've been begging God for, our desires and our hearts for what we want, that we would bring them to God right now. And we'd say, hey, if my desires are not your desires, then change my heart. Change my desires to be in line with your desires. And I know at this time of the year, everybody makes resolutions. Maybe you've made some New Year's resolutions. Those can be really wonderful to get healthier or whatever that is for you to get in better habits. But maybe right now we would just surrender our resolutions to God as well. That, that our number one resolution would be surrendering to God. And it's not just a January 1 thing. It's a January 2, 3, 4. It's every single day constantly surrendering to God. Because tomorrow you'll wake up and your, your flesh is going to pull. And it's going to say, live for yourself. Follow your desires. Do what you want. But we know that God's plans are greater and better than anything we can imagine. And so... Let's go ahead and bow our heads and pray, surrender to God. Father, we surrender to you now. We know that that is something easy to say, but it is a hard thing to do. So God, we need your strength right now. We need the, the Holy Spirit to indwell us and help us to surrender to you. to let go of the things that we've been clinging to. Maybe the things from last year that we're trying to drag into this year that you've been trying to pry out of our hands, God, we surrender them to you. All the plans that we have made, we surrender them to you. God, all of our time, it is for you that we exist and you created us to glorify you. And so we surrender our time where you want us to serve, where you want us to help people, where you want us to lay down our lives so we can find it in you. We surrender our time. Father, we surrender our desires. But this life really isn't about what we want if, if we received everything that we wanted, we would destroy ourselves. So we surrender our desires to you. And God, I pray that if our desires do not match your desires, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you would move in our lives and you would change our minds and our hearts and our desires would adapt and change into your desires. God, we give you all of our resolutions. We know most of our resolutions that we make are very good things, but we still surrender them to you. God, our prayer is simply use us. That you are the potter and we are the clay, so mold us and make us into what you will. Create us to be something that you want to use, something for your glory, something to, to reach other people, to share your love and your grace and your mercy with them. Father, I pray for our church as a whole, that we would be a church that is surrendered to you at all times, 
that this is not about a person or a name or an individual. This is about Jesus and your glory. So God, as a church, we surrender to you for this next year. Whatever plans you have for us, whatever purposes, whatever, whatever missions you have for us, we surrender to you to be used in whatever way, even if it's hard, even if it's not what we want to do, we surrender to your will, God. And Father, as we continue praying as individuals, I pray that every heart is leaning into you and surrendering to you now. We thank you as we continue praying in Jesus' name. This is my surrender, this is my surrender, here is where I lay it down, every lie and every doubt, this is my surrender. This 
This is my surrender. This is my surrender. And here is where I lay it down. Every lie and every doubt. This is my surrender. Oh, I will make room. Our third and last prayer topic that we really wanted to focus in on today, as Nikki and I were praying over this service and over the next year, we came up with thankfulness and surrender. And the third thing is expectancy, is that I believe if we look in scripture, we see that God calls his people to not just hope and, and pray, but, but, but we expect God to fulfill his promises. We expect God to move. And, and that's the faith that we bring in to our lives is, a, is, a, is faith of expectancy that God is who he says he is and that God is over all and he is above all and he is sovereign. And so we have to have that heart. And so we want a prayer, prayer, of, of, prayer of expectancy. 
Romans 8, 28 says, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. Now, that scripture is tough because who, who's the author of good, right? Uh, but we know that God is the author of good. And so he, he, he's got these good things for us, that, that all things work together for good, for, for his children, for those that are called according to his purpose. And if you're a believer, you've been called according to his purposes and what God wants to do in your life. And so uh, let God be the definition of good. When, when you are feeling like your life isn't good, trust God and expect God to move because but he is the one that says what is good. One of my favorite passages also is in Ephesians 3, verse 20 says, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. That is our heart. That is our God. That whatever you think God can do, he can do exceedingly more, abundantly more, immeasurably more than what you think he can do. And so let that be the fuel as we pray a prayer of expectancy, what God's going to do in our church, what he's going to do in your lives individually, in your families, in your children, in our city. Let that be what fuels you, that God, whatever you're praying, God can do infinitely and immeasurably more than what you are praying. We believe that God has good things for us. We believe that God isn't finished. And we know that as a church, we still have work to do in the kingdom of God. And so let's go ahead and pray this prayer of expectancy. And then as we did before, you can continue praying for a few minutes after. So Father, we come to you now with thankfulness and surrender, but also knowing that you are God. The capital G God, the one true only God that you are the God that created all things, that you have placed every galaxy and every star that exists into space. You spoke them into existence. And you created every tiny molecule that we can't even see that makes up matter. God, that nothing is out of your hand Nothing is out of your control. So when our lives and when the world seems chaotic, we know that sin is running rampant on the earth, but you have not lost your throne and you have not lost your authority and you have not lost control, that you are God and that you sent Jesus to pay for all of this sin and that one day you will come and make everything new and everything right. And so with that thought of knowing who you are, God, we come expecting that you will fulfill your promises in Scripture. That when you say you'll never leave us, we can expect that you will never leave us. That when you say all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose, that we can believe that and expect that that is true. When your Scripture says that you can do abundantly more immeasurably more than all that we could ask, imagine, or think, God, that we expect that to be true and we know this to be true. So we come with faith right now, filled with faith, God, that you will move in this upcoming year. That we believe revival will move, that the people will be saved, that families will be restored, that churches will continue to go forth and share the gospel into the dark corners where no one else wants to go. And as we continue to share the gospel and sow seeds that, God, you would work like only you can. You are the only one that can save. We are just the messengers of the good news. And then you come in and bring salvation. That we, God, we believe for healing in this year. We believe for miracles in this year. God, that we know that this last year had many hard times. And we know that this next year will have hard times that you told us in this life you will have trouble. But you gave us another promise that take heart, I have overcome the world. And so we expect, God, that you will move even through the hard, even through the ugly, even through the struggle, even through the pain, even through the hurt, God, that you will move and you will work and you will be with us and you will bring out good in all of those circumstances. God, 
God, we're expecting to see growth in this church body. Not just in numbers. Even though we believe that you want us to minister to more families and more people, God, but we, I'm believing for growth spiritually in our hearts and in our lives as we continue to dive into your word and preach the gospel every single Sunday and attend life group and attend women's meeting and whatever ministries else we have going on, God, that you're going to continue to grow us spiritually into mature Christians that have fully surrendered to your will. God, I believe you're going to continue to work in our servants and in our children's ministry, God, that we're going to see children saved and baptized through this church. We're going to see husbands and wives saved and baptized in this church this year. God, we expect you to move. And we're not commanding you to move. We're just clinging to the promises that you've given us and believing in who you say you are. So God, do immeasurably more than what we're asking. Do abundantly more than what we could ever imagine. Move in our city, in the surrounding churches in our area, God. I pray that you would protect them, that you would grow in them, that you would bring revival to them, that you would bring salvation in these churches and let their ministries prosper. God, in our country, we need your healing. We need your touch. So let the gospel go forth that our country would see you, the people would see you, and they would turn back to you, and they would love you. They would obey you. They would trust in you. We're expecting for 2023 to be a powerful, powerful year, God. Not because of us, but because of you. So God, we continue to pray as individuals for the next few minutes, God, that you would just move in our lives personally and our families. God, just have your way in this place. We pray this in Jesus' name. came to the world you created trading your crown for a cross you willingly died your innocent life paid the cost and counting your status is nothing the king of all kings came to serve Washing my feet and covering me with your love. If more of you means less of me, take everything. Yes, all of you is all I need. Take everything.
Cause you are my life and my treasure The one that I can't live without So here at your feet my desires and dreams I lay Desires and dreams I lay down. Come on, church. Him more of you means less of me. Take everything. Yes, all of you is all I need. Take everything. Even more. to enter our time of communion, so if you haven't prepared your heart, go ahead and take this time to do that, and then um, we just want to say that 
once again, as Nikki and I was praying over this service and over this year, one thing kept coming back to us, and it was this, this his year. His year. And I don't know about you, but I've already seen all the posts, and I don't think there's anything, I'm not throwing shade at any of these people, but I've seen all the posts. This is my year. Right, have you seen that? This is going to be my year. This is my year. When I'm going to do what I want to do and I'm going to accomplish what I want to accomplish, this is going to be my year. And man, I think if we read Scripture and our heart is clinging to God, what the word is, words are is His year. Less of us, more of Him. And so I, I want that to be the theme. My desire is that that would be the theme for our church in this upcoming year. And honestly, forever it's not my year it's not my job it's not my family it's not my money it's not my time it's not my stuff this is his this is his year so so we proclaim that together god this is your year so our prayer is his year and let that be a reminder to us maybe you need to take to be a sticky note person put that on your your vanity mirror his year it's his day he created you. You are his. It's all about his. This is the year for Jesus and for God to move. This is his year. And so I want that to be our heart. There's a heart behind thankfulness and surrender and expectancy. God, what do you want to do? If you've been with us in years past, we've done vision casts where we've talked about all the things we want to do, right? And I think those are really cool, and I think it is the good to get people excited. Uh, we've kind of been stumbling out of COVID. Like, we don't know what the future brings, and I think God actually used that to kind of lean us in and say, hey, listen, maybe um, it's great to make plans, but maybe just, just pray. Maybe just seek me and just say, hey, God, this is your year. This is yours. This is my time. I belong to you. And so that's our heart is this is his year. And so we're, with that heart, and with that mindset, we're going to do something really cool where we get to take communion on the first day of the new year as a family together. And so um, take your time when you're ready to come up here. The cups are double cups. So when you pick up the juice, there's two cups there. The, the bread is under it in a second cup. And so if you would, just take your time. Don't push anybody down, right? Take your time, get your uh, communion, and, and go sit back in your seat and just wait for us to take it together. And just as a reminder, uh, you don't have to be a member here at Vision to partake in communion. We just ask that you are a believer, that you have trusted in Jesus. This is for believers. And so if you've trusted in Jesus, you are following him, um, then, then you are more than welcome to take. And also, as we said at the beginning, if you're dealing with some bitterness, unforgiveness, and your heart doesn't feel right, maybe sit, sit out on this one too. We want to come to the table in the right way, uh, surrender to God with nothing uh, hindering us from coming to God. So if you would, go ahead and come forward and get, your, get the elements. If you can't come forward, uh, we can have somebody bring it to you as well.
Does anyone need one brought to them? Just make sure everybody's able to partake the can. And then we'll make sure our people that are serving in the back are able to take after the service as well. This is one of the coolest things I think a church gets to do together because we can kind of get to get in that heart of the original followers of Jesus as he gathers them around the table and he really tells them that he's going to die, tells them the sacrifice that he's going to pay for them and they're not quite understanding it. For us, we understand what this means. And it might have been confusing to them, but for us, we see the sacrifice of his body being beaten for us or his blood being poured out because without the, the, the pouring of blood, there is no remission of sin. So there had to be a payment. If, if sin was going to be conquered, there had to be a payment. The only one that could do that was Jesus because he was perfect. He was sinless, so his blood was pure. And so the, 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 the perfect lamb, right, without blemish, without sin, gets sacrificed for all of us sinful people. And we see the love of God in that. And, and the gospel is all weaving through this and so if you do not know Jesus was God's son sent to earth we celebrated that at Christmas he grew up and he did ministry and he taught the good news of of who God was and who he is and he explained what he was going to do and eventually they, they killed him which was the plan but evil men killed him and put him on a cross and killed him for our sins but he didn't stay dead, he resurrected, and he is alive, and he is that presence that you feel in this place as we worship and celebrate. In Matthew 26, this is the story of the, the Lord's Supper. It says, now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. If you have your bread, you may eat it. And Jesus then took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. You may drink. pray one more time just to thank God that we get to do that together and thank him for his sacrifice. We're going to worship some more. We have another worship song, right? And then uh, at the end, we're actually going to have another prayer. This is a prayer service, y'all. So, uh, so if you would just bow your head with me. Father, most of us can't fathom the thought of giving up their child for people that hate him. But God, we thank you that you would send your son and that Jesus would live in this world, this dark world that hated him and treated him poorly and abused him. Father, and that he would go to the cross and even while being spat on and ridiculed and laughed at as he was dying on a cross would still pour out forgiveness to the people murdering him. God, I want us to feel the gravity that is our sin that put Jesus on the cross. But I also want us to feel the weight of your love pouring over us because that is what the cross is about that you loved us so much that you would send Jesus for us. So we thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for your body and your blood. And we thank you for the opportunity to get together as a church family and partake in the Lord's Supper together. God, have your way as we worship. This is all for you to celebrate you and to glorify you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Down here.
here if anyone needs any type of prayer and we have other prayer people that will step forward and pray with you as well. This last year has been a lot of 
there's been a lot of heartache. There's been a lot of loss. And so we just want to feel that, and we just want to pray that God would comfort family. The last couple of days has been really tough for families. We've had loss in our church family. We've had loss in our actual family, and um, we feel that weight. And so we're, we're going to just, I know we've been praying a lot, but man, what, that's what we do, right? That's what we do. We cling to God. And so we're going to pray some more. But one thing I want to do is I want to be intentional to pray. If you guys know um, Jerry Reggio, has been coming to church for a long time. He, he had cancer before and, and got through that, and the cancer has came back. And so uh, I would just like to lay hands on Jerry. Um, and um, if you can't get in, reach him. He's right here in the third row. Um, I'm going to just come out here. I'm going to lay hands on him. If you want to reach your hand forward, whatever it is, but we're going to pray that God would continue to heal and work and strengthen him as he goes through his treatments. Um, and we'll also spend this time, if you just know family, you know people that are dealing with loss, just cover them in prayer as well. Father, we pray for Jerry right now. I ask that you would just lift him up and strengthen him, God, that you would give him some supernatural strength right now as he's going through these treatments and these struggles and the, and the pain and the sickness that comes with it, God, that you are, you are bigger than cancer, that you are bigger than anything else, God, and we trust you and we have faith and we believe And us as a church where two or more are gathered, God, that you are in the midst, and we pray right now as we lay hands on him believing for supernatural healing, God. We pray that the cancer has no hold on him, that the cancer would just shrink and dissipate, God, that you uh, would defeat it right now, God, that you, you, we know that your ways are bigger than anything we can imagine, but God, we, you know our heart, you know our desire, you know what we, we would like, God. We, we love Jerry. He's a huge part of this church, and God, we just ask that you would just, just pour over him in a supernatural way, God that this year would just be a great year of growth and, and of healing uh, for him. God, we ask that you would strengthen Sabra and the entire family as they're going through this as well, God. Um, God, but that we know that, that cancer doesn't overcome you, God, that it's not bigger than you, it's not stronger than you, God, that you are stronger and greater than cancer or anything else, God. We pray for many other people that are dealing with it as well, God, that you would overcome it, God, that you would use doctors, medicine, whatever it is, God, that you, it, your ways would just to bring uh, end to this cancer, God. God, that, that he's already been through it once, and God, that we believe that you'll get him through it this time as well. We trust you, God. We're, we're, having, we're full of faith right now, God. Full of faith pouring it over Jerry. And God, as we stand here in this moment praying for Jerry, we also pray for all the other families and other people that are dealing with loss during this time. God, we just pray that you would comfort them and, and wrap them in your arms. Do what only you can do. God, bring light out of darkness. You are the only one that can do that, and so we ask that you do that as well. God, we thank you for this church family that covers each other and loves each other and holds each other and lifts each other up when we can't stand on our own. I ask that you would continue to do that and grow this family this year as well in that way. We thank you for our care team, God, that's just loving our church well with meals and so many other things, God. We ask that you would just continue to use them in, in many ways. We thank you, God. We thank you for Jerry. Just heal him. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So church, as I say every week, um, it's our honor to be here and pray with you and worship you and celebrate this new year with you, um, to celebrate that all that God did in 2022, all that he's brought us through, um, and then an expectation of all that he's going to do this year through you, through our church family, whatever that looks like. We know that God isn't finished with his people yet. Um, so we want to continue serving and continue praying, continue worshiping until the day that he comes back for his church. Um, so if you have questions about the gospel, if you need prayer, um, please fill out an online connect card. You can always find that in the bio of the live stream on Facebook or on our website, or just grab someone here that you know that's been here for a bit. They look comfortable or grab me and Nathan. I um, mean, we would love to talk about anything with you, Jesus especially, because um, making, putting your trust in Jesus is the best decision you could ever make in your life. Um, just a few other things that we want to talk about. Um, as Nathan kind of mentioned, there's been a lot of loss in these last couple of weeks, and that hits hard, especially during the holidays um, where you want to cling to loved ones. Um, so if you've signed up to be a part of the care team um, and committed to that, I just want to remind you of how important that is, um, whether that's just prayer, sending cards, sending meals, whatever that looks like. Um, but if you didn't know and you hadn't seen the obituary on Facebook, Don Oxford passed away. Um, this past week 
and went home to be with his Lord. So we celebrate that he was a believer and his story is not finished yet, but because he trusted in Jesus, he has the promise of eternal life. So Don is worshiping as he's never worshiped before right now, but we want to help care for their family. The services for that are Monday at two. So if you signed up for the care team, or even if you didn't and you want to help love on the Oxford family, um, we're hoping to do a small funeral dinner here after the services. Um, so please, there's a sign up sheet on the little table in that corner past the tree and it's to your right sign up to bring something for that dinner we need help with that to make that happen um, and we really appreciate all the people who have been active part of the care team um, and all of our prayer warriors it makes all of the difference um, and it helps make us feel like family um, so again church we just thank you for being here and happy new year we'll see you next week <laughs>